.NET MAUI is out for general availability and is looking to be a great framework to build multi-platform apps. So let's dig in. Hi, my name is Chris and welcome to the first of many .NET MAUI videos I plan on doing. This is a framework I've been very excited about as I've been a fan of Xamarin for a long time and I really can't wait to put out resources for you all on .NET MAUI over the coming weeks. So like and subscribe if you're interested in that type of content. In a moment, we'll look at the starter MAUI app that comes with Visual Studio, but right now we actually need to download a preview version of Visual Studio since the current version does not include the .NET MAUI toolset. This may change in the future, so if you're watching this a couple months from now or later, um, hopefully these tools come with Visual Studio automatically, but for the moment, you have to actually go out and download the preview version, which is the 17.3 preview. I'll leave a link in the description with the this page here so you can click on your version of Visual Studio that you need, probably community version. Once that's downloaded and you get a little further in the install process, you're going to be asked about which uh, workloads you want to install. Workloads are just basically packages of uh, build tools that Microsoft puts out. And in our case, we want to make sure that we have the MAUI workload, which is right here, .NET multi-application uh, multi-platform application UI development. Um, and obviously, depending on what you're wanting to do, you may want to install others as well. Uh, but the important one is this .NET MAUI one here. So once that, once you've got that clicked, you can go through the install process and you should end up here. Okay, from there, uh, hopefully it's obvious, but you need to create a new project and then you need to go and select the .NET MAUI tools. Um, they should be down here. If you want, instead of scrolling, you can obviously just search. And we want to create a .NET MAUI app. Uh, you can also create class libraries and Blazor apps as well. well those will be covered in a later video, but for right now we're going to do a .NET MAUI app. Um, just going to name mine, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, .NET 6. And Visual Studio will start up. Once inside and uh, Visual Studio is fully loaded up, you are greeted by some beautiful XAML. Uh, if you're not familiar with XAML, it's uh, pretty cool. I would look into it for sure because you're going to be needing it in MAUI. Um, it's based on Xamarin uh, library, which is an old uh, multi-platform UI development set uh, that Microsoft bought at some point. I think it was like 2014 or something like that. Um, but uh, So you're greeted with that XAML and you've got some CS here as well. Uh, to be able to run the demo app, you need to go up and make sure you're looking at Windows Machine just to run the Windows version. You press play, the uh, run button. And uh, I believe, I already I already have this done, but I believe it's going to ask you the first time you run this, uh, if you've never debugged or you've never ran Windows Store type apps before, uh, it's going to ask you to essentially put your, your Windows uh, OS into like a developer mode. And, uh, or I guess basically what it is, it's a saying, hey, can you sideload Windows apps that are based on the Windows Store? Um, because when you run this, you are essentially sideloading a store, a Windows Store app. So uh, it'll ask you to do that. Just go into the things, do it. It's not a big deal or anything. Um, but basically, just know that that's going to happen. Once you execute that, you end up with this nice little robot guy uh, with a Windows app. You can resize it any way you want. Um, it's got a, the, the default demo comes with a little click button. You can click it and it increments a counter. Very cool. Um, so that's the windows app itself. I'll note that, um, you can run this on, you know, as this is multi-platform technology, you can run this on different platforms and these build tools come with ways to do that. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is Android. So, um, Android, the process is going to be a little bit of setup. So first thing you need to do. Uh, I would recommend is to go into the Android SDK and tools and depending on the type of uh, type of processor you have, you should turn on either Intel uh, x86 emulator accelerator or Android emulator hypervisor driver for AMD processors. Um, you need to turn one of these two on depending on the type of processor you have and that's going to speed up your Android emulator um, believe me you want that uh, I was I was trying to run it without that at some point and it took literally 20 minutes for the, <laughs> the emulator to start so uh, you definitely want one of these I have an AMD so I have that installed 
uh, as well. And just to let you know about this as well, I I can't use this, but you may be able to. Um, there's there's a there's a hypervisor kind of system built in with Windows that you can select if you type. Um, if you go to the Windows screen and type turn Windows features on or off, and you can scroll down through here, you will see something called the Windows Hypervisor Platform. And if you have Windows uh, 10 or 11 um, Professional or Above Edition, so not Home Edition, but Professional or Above, you will also see a Hypervisor V uh, feature in here as well. If you turn both of those on, uh, I believe that does pretty good emulator acceleration as well uh, through the Windows uh, platform hypervisor. So um, you probably do want to turn those on if you have access to them just to improve performance there. Um, but I cannot do that, so I can't even really test it for you. Sorry about that. But, you know, I guess I'm cheap and have the home edition. So now that you have that turned on, uh, when you, by the way, when you did do that in the SDK manager, you, uh, you want to turn that on. And then apply the change. It'll install it, download it, um, and then you want to restart your computer because it is a pretty low-level process. Um, but once that's set up, you can then go up to the Android Device Manager, which is right here. If you click that, so you won't have anything here yet. You can click New, and it will take you through setting up an emulator. Um, pretty much, you could probably just leave most of this default depending on what type of stuff you want to test. Um, Pay special note to the processor type. And yeah, that's kind of it there. And then once you have that, it'll it'll install it, it'll unzip it, do all this stuff, and it'll take a while. Um, and then you are ready to launch. Okay, once you have your emulator set up, you can then run it. Uh, and then from here, you have a Android phone on your Windows PC. Pretty cool. Um, and this is pretty much a fully functioning phone. Uh, you can browse the web, you can go to YouTube, you could subscribe to this guy right here. Uh, here he's putting out good stuff. Um, yeah, you can do pretty much anything. The thing we are interested in is running our Android or our um, Maui application on our Android. So the way to do that is to press the run button. It will build it and then sideload it onto your emulator. And then from there, we have our Android app. Um, the code looks a little different. It's not counting, which I think is interesting. I don't know if it's a sizing thing or what's going on there, but, um, but anyways, yeah, you've got the same app that you had in the Windows Store you have in your Android emulator. So that's pretty cool. And I should also mention that um, if you do want to restart your app or whatever, uh, you can pretty much do, uh, you know, you can go into this area of Android. You can clear it out that way. Um, and you can refind your app in the installed apps on the Android uh, OS. So okay, so there's other types you can run as well. Um, I actually personally don't own an iOS device, so I cannot test on them. Um, there may be ways to do it around, but everything, every option I've looked at in here required having a Mac hooked up to your network or uh, an iOS, you know, a phone hooked up to your network. So um, I can't show those, but those are there as well, and I'm sure they can't be that difficult to set up. Um, I will say, I do believe I heard that you need an Apple dev account to to test these devices, which I believe costs $100 a year. So if you're going to test on an iOS device, um, you have to have that account, I believe. And um, so just note that, you know, typical <laughs> Apple gatekeeping. But um, yeah, so... Uh, that pretty much wraps up what we're going to look at today. Um, this is just kind of getting you in there so you can get your Hello World running and you can start building your Maui apps. So um, in the next uh, kind of video in the series, I'm going to walk you through the default app, the actual code itself. We're going to discuss the app design principles that they're using and how OS-specific changes work. So lots of exciting stuff to come with .NET Maui. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, please leave a like and subscribe and let's get on to the next one.